Thank you. So the first thing I'd like to start uh, by doing is to say thank you again for uh, opening your mind to the new ideas you see here tonight. Um, we have such an amazing growing city, uh, but with that, there's new opportunities, um, but also new challenges that do require your innovation. Uh, and so what I wanted to talk to you about today was um, a project that my team and I worked on called the Permit Tool. And what it does is pretty much analyze over 100,000 permits and find trends in our city. So if we look at an aerial of our downtown, we can sort of see this building-like strategy going on in terms of how we grow. Uh, but it's really unlike playing with Lego. We all just construct these buildings, we plan them, we decide where to put them, and when we put them down, it affects where future ones will go. But the problem with this is if you remember what it's like playing with your friends with Lego, uh, you would build something, but as soon as you're almost done, they would take that one last piece that you wanted, <laughs> right? And so the guy with the suit's pretty shook because this girl just took his road. <laughs> so imagine instead of four people, we have 100,000 people trying to do something at the same time. And that's how our city grows right now. Uh, it's a very, very complex process. And this is why planning for our city uh, is time consuming. It's risky and it's often chaotic. So in order to better plan cities uh, and predict future growth, I think we need to have a fundamental shift in how we analyze our city uh, to begin with. And this is best described by actually going back into the past. So uh, in the 1980s, um, you would count uh, all your records, say, for a checkbook, and you would write it down manually. You would add everything up and get down to a total where it would show how your balance is. But like always, someone would not pay. <laughs> and so you would make your calculations, uh, you'd redo it and have to re-add everything and come out to your new total. Um, and you would keep having to do this whenever someone didn't do exactly what you planned. And that's just the reality of the city we live in. It doesn't always go to plan. We have to be able to adapt. So along came this legend. Uh, his name's Dan Bricknow. And um, during the same time, he was uh, in class and his professor was on the blackboard. Um, and he was erasing and recalculating all of these formulas whenever a new variable came about. And so what Dan thought is, well, you know what? This is kind of silly. We should have a blackboard where if you change one number, all the other ones change too. And when he initially penciled it, no one understood it. It just didn't make sense. Um, it wasn't until he actually made a commercial version of it and put it in front of people and said, listen, I'm going to change one number and everything else changes. And this is um, the father of Excel, of, of what we know it and we use it every day. Um, as an aside, whoever knows what toe toner is, let me know. <laughs> I want to invest in that. <laughs> so um, anyways, this is the first step of what Dan's plan was, and the beauty of it was it allowed us to ask what if. We could analyze so many new questions so much faster, and so people asked more questions, and that's how he actually pushed um, the speed at which we can analyze different things. Uh, but really, this was only step one of his plan. Uh, the second step was actually how to turn a sea of the data around us into data we could see. Um, and this is visualization, turning it in from numbers to charts. They're so much easier to communicate, and that is actually the key. When we can link charts with automated calculations, we can communicate new ideas so much faster than before. And this is why Excel has charts. This is why we use it every day. Um, and this did not benefit just accountants, it benefited everyone. In fact, I presume everyone in this room has touched and used Excel for some purpose. So then we come back to our buildings. We've been analyzing our city using the same technology since 1980. It, nothing much has changed. So what happens when we start to use the technology around us today, which has improved so much, to look at our city and plan future growth. And so we started by simply turning bar graphs into 3D maps. And the results were quite astonishing. It turned out to actually look like our city. And no one is coming here and making blocks or adjusting them. This was purely data talking. 
our CD can be replicated and visualized through all this information. And instead of looking at charts or matrices of numbers, we can just look at our city and, and communicate so much faster with visualization. If we can turn data into these interactive tools that are so easy for us to just play with and not have to have the understanding of how to use Excel proficiently, what happens um, to our ability to share ideas? And this extends not only to our city, but also into our neighborhoods. We, we can look at how fast neighborhoods are growing. Each one of these dots is a house, but it's represented wholly by data. Uh, we can see when new schools are being built. We can see the status of new shopping centers that are coming about. Uh, and I believe this is the fundamental shift that we need to build better cities. We can find underlying patterns in how we've been living for the past decade, ones that we could never finally ever see before. Um, but the first step in order to build better cities of the future is to get everyone playing in this same Lego sandbox so we can all understand and um, share more ideas. So ever since we've created this tool called the Permit Tool, new users have found things to do with it that we've never anticipated. Um, and so we believe that today, the best way to actually push our city forward is to share this tool with you. And so from now on, um, it's published, it's online. This is actually the public debut of the Permit Tool. And it's free to access uh, for as long as we can keep it that way. So the only cost of creating a better future is simply your imagination.